Hi, I'm Rob Corley, and as you can see, my hair has gotten a little bit thicker than it was the last time we talked, but that's okay. Today, I want to talk with you about hope and keeping hope and not losing hope, because if I have to be honest with you, the times that we're living in right now are very hard. We're still in the age of the COVID-19 virus situation that we're not exactly sure when it's going to be solved. Um, they say they have a vaccine and they're hopefully they'll get those out. Some have already been administered. So with that, hopefully we'll be able to soon praying, praying to God that we beat this virus and we'll be able to somewhat return back to a little bit of what our lives were before maybe not exactly but however close we can get to it um i know uh times have been hard for a lot of people a lot of people have been put out of work because of this virus businesses are shutting down and um a lot of people are losing their lives. People are losing family members and friends all over the place. And it it can be kind of scary, you know. But I think as long as we do what the doctors are saying, like washing our hands and keeping our distance fairly from each other and uh, still just you know calling people on the phone checking on them to see how they're doing i think then that's how we can sort of keep stay connected with each other and not sort of lose our minds and you know i believe in god right so i i feel like i have to in some kind of way draw some type of biblical saying in this and i'm talking to you about hope and having hope and you know staying strong and keep fighting and just just keep because these these times are very hard you know they can be kind of depressing at times but we get for those of us who believe we got to keep our faith and trust that God is going to bring us out of this and he will bring us out if we just trust in him and we just stay prayed up we just keep praying everything and we do our part by washing our hands and keeping our distance watching our distance when we're interacting with people when we go places yeah that's how we can in our way do our part to help beat this virus so and god you leave the rest to god he'll take care of that and then everything will be fine i truly believe that Okay, so as a scripture, well, I'm going to read a few of them. Um, first one I'm going to read is Romans 15 and 13. And it says there, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. So... I want to say that you can you can find happiness in having hope and hope just it's like it's like faith faith is like hope because when you're hoping for something that you want it to happen you believe that it will happen and that's like when you pray to God you ask God for things and you're hoping when when you pray you're hoping that God will supply all of those things that you're asking for at that time but um, hope I don't think hope is just saying you know hope is like a feeling in here like I can say that I hope he gets a job. Well, you're hoping 
it's almost like wishing you want you want that person to do this this and this but the hope is where the hope comes in and the faith comes in that's where because if it doesn't happen right away because things oftentimes things don't happen right when we want them to that's where we got to keep the hope and the faith and the trust in God that he's going to provide for us if you are if you are a believer then you can understand what I'm saying here and even, even if you're not a believer you can still understand what I'm saying I'm pretty sure but as I was saying before, there are a lot of people who I feel like they don't have hope because there's nothing that probably they have anything to look forward to. I don't know what your situation is or what their situation might be, but I feel like I have to have hope because everything doesn't always go the way that I want it to. And when anytime something doesn't go the way I want it to, I have to go back to God. I have to pray to God and I have to ask God what it is that I need to do to make sure that I'm going where I need to go, where, uh, where he would want me to go. If that's helping somebody, if that's talking to you here, um, that's fine. Then. I would ask him in my prayer to show me that and to show me the way so that I am less confused about what I need to be doing and how to get there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read another scripture because, hey, look, you guys know I've told you this before. I'm a believer. I believe in God. I believe in a higher being that watches over all of us. So I, I feel like. I hope that's okay if I'm sharing my own beliefs and faith with you. I hope that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to read Psalms 9, 9 through 10. It says, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And then Psalm 34 and 10, it says, Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And then Isaiah 26, 3 through 4, it says, Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord God, you have an everlasting rock. So basically, God, if we're talking about biblical times and God and believing and God is always going to be there for us okay you for you who believe you know that in church they always say God is always there and I believe that he is that he's all around us he's watching us all the time and we just got to we just have to know that in whatever we do, wherever we go, that God is always going to be there to protect us. And I honestly don't believe, I don't think that God would let anything, at least not anything too bad happen to us, that we can't handle or that one, once we come out of, even though it might be difficult to get out of that bad place, that our faith would become stronger in Him and that hope having hope that that's a positive thing having hope it's almost like hope and faith are like the same okay now I'm gonna actually read you what the definition of hope is uh, hope is commonly used to mean as a wish which is what I said earlier hoping is kind of like wishing I wish he would do this. I wish she would talk to me more. I wish he would come around more. I wish I could talk to my best friend more. I wish I could uh, be more supportive of my family. 
things like that. Its strength is the strength of the person's desire. But in the Bible, here it's saying that hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength in his faithfulness, which is what I touched on earlier. When we're praying, we're hoping that God and we're trusting that God will do the things that we're asking him to provide in our prayers. See, we when we pray, we can't just pray to say stuff. We can't if we just say stuff, we have to really mean it. We can't just say it and expect God to do it. You know, because God doesn't operate that way. He doesn't just uh, we can't just say, God, go here. God, do that. We can't do that because God is over us. We can't command God to do anything. God is the reason that we are all alive today. I truly believe that. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you do too. And those of you who are believers, you know. You know that God rules over everything. He oversees everything. There is nothing in this world that God does not see because he created the world. He created the trees. He created the sky. He created the clouds. He created the water that flows across the ocean or the water that makes up the ocean. He created the grass, the rocks, all the animals that you see. Us. He created us. So I, I don't know. And I'm not telling anybody what to believe in or how to believe, but for people that say that there is no God or there is no higher being, I have a hard time understanding why they say that. Because I remember somebody said to me a long time ago that if, if you truly want to believe there is a God, or if you don't, all you have to do is look up and I really I really understand what that means because if you look up you see the sky well if you're outside you'll see the sky in a building here you can't see all you can see is the ceiling but when you're outside you see uh, uh, the sky you see it's blue and white clouds most of the time sometimes it's cloudy and it rains don't you always wonder how the rain can fall from uh, from the sky like that and then you wonder how it can all of a sudden be clear and you see a bright colorful rainbow going across the way I, I truly do believe that's only God especially when the trees change colors in the fall and the leaves fall and then winter comes and they're bare and then the spring comes back around and all the leaves are right back on that tree. That's that's just amazing. And you know the trees they get old and they they even though they get old they just keep on getting stronger and stronger. That's it's amazing to me how nature works that way. And I know I'm going on into an explanation and a rant which I really didn't mean to do that. Uh I'm talking to you about hope because we have to keep hope alive. We got we to gotta stay hopeful through this situation, this virus situation. And not only just this virus situation, but all the, uh, the problems that are going on in this world, like global warming and uh, all the racial injustices that we've been witnessing over this past year and the past couple of months, actually the past few years, uh, we, we have to do better as people. You know, this is... This is um, this is coming to you at Black History Month, African American History Month, however you want to say it, where we recognize all the people of color who have come and gone, who have paved the way for us to be able to do the things that we do now. We have to remember that there was always somebody who came before us to make a way for us to be able to do the things that we do now. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to preach to nobody. I'm not a preacher. But I just feel like we got we to gotta recognize and give props to the people who came before us 
that made it possible for us to be able to do the things that we do, like for me to be able to talk to you freely like this, the way that I'm talking to you, and express some of my beliefs and some of my faiths, uh, I can do that freely without having too many issues, you know? That probably back then I probably would not have been able to do. Because I'm telling you, the world is a lot better than what it was maybe 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. But we still, even though the world has progressed a lot, we still have far way to go before we can even get to even close to where we want to be as people, as a human society, and as uh, making the world a better place, taking care of the planet, not throwing trash all over the ground and stuff, recycling, um, making sure we're not wasting water. All, all of those things can help make our world a better place to live in. We need to start treating people better. We need to start treating people the way that we want to be treated. Um, I mean, plane going over. But anyway, I mean, I had I had some notes here, but I think I'm gonna put it down for a minute because I I really I really I'm talking to you about keeping hope alive and the way when we keep hope alive, that is the key to us being able to fight on to be able to do the things that we need to do so that we can continue to progress as a society and continue to grow to make our world a better place and treat people right, treat people the way they want to be treated, treat people the way you want to be treated, treat people with respect because that is truly what can truly make the difference. Don't don't treat people like crap, you know? Don't treat don't be mean to people that you don't need to be mean to. In fact, you don't need to be uh, speaking mean to anybody, speaking bad about anybody, because nobody is better than anyone else. That is the most important thing. And also, and also, before I close this out, love each other the way that God loves us, the way that he sent his son Jesus to love us. And the fact is that he gave his life. God's son Jesus gave his life on a cross because he loved us so much. Isn't that amazing? I, I find that amazing every time somebody mentions it to me, every time I hear that story, every time I read about it in the Bible, or every time I see it on a special on TV or in a movie. It's, it's amazing how he was willing to give up his own life for us because of his love for us knowing that we needed somebody to be saved by. That's just amazing to me. Okay, all right, I'm finished now. I, if, if it seemed like I was going on a rant, I'm sorry. I just had to do it, you know. But, main thing, keep hope, keep hope alive, stay hopeful, stay prayed up, pray to God. In fact, I'm going to say a short prayer right now. I'm going to pray that God will help you see the way to go and to lead you in the way that he would want you to go and to help you find your purpose in life and to help us to be better people and just to treat people right and do our part to make this world a better place. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this. I hope this helped you. And I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.